What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Retro Aviation. Hope you guys have a fantastic day today. Today we have the October 2023 Pensacola International Airport update for you guys. I really hope you guys are excited for today's video. Today we have a very exciting airport update in store for everybody. Today we got some various aircraft movements, some really cool developments, and all kinds of fun items to dive into in today's Pensacola update. I really hope you guys are excited for this, and without any further delay, let's go ahead and get started. So, really exciting Pensacola update in store today. I'll go over this really quick here at the beginning because it's a pretty monumental event here regarding Pensacola. But I got to visit the Pensacola International Airport in August of 2023. I know I'm a little late to cover it, but of course I pre-recorded my airport updates, so that kind of didn't follow very well in the time frame. But nevertheless, I did get the visit. I'll talk about it more at the end of the video so that we can get straight into the update. But it was super fun to get to see how Pensacola was, uh, how it looks in real life with the various aircraft. You know, I've done several of these updates, so I knew where everything was going to park, but it was really cool to just see it, you know, full-fledged in action. And now was uh, really cool. Uh, my goal is to visit every airport that I have a model of. Now I'm making really good progress. I still lack Reno, Orange County, and uh, I think a couple others, but I'm really excited for the future and I'm hopeful to continue to knock them out. But it was unexpected, so I was really excited to get to visit and it was a really great time. So yeah, I really enjoyed that experience and that was super fun. But nevertheless, we'll jump into today's update. I'll talk about that a little bit more towards the end of the video. So let's go ahead and get started. Starting right here, gate number four with this Delta Airlines Boeing 737-900ER. This aircraft's currently coming in from the Atlanta Hartsfield Jackson International Airport or Citrus Aviation's Airport. Awesome to see Delta continuing to facilitate all this mainline here on ATL. As you would expect, uh, it's doing really well. So very excited to see where it goes from here. And it's gonna be very exciting. So this aircraft, like I said, is heading over to Atlanta. This Frontier Airbus A320 will be substituted for Griswold's new uh, aircraft on the Airbus A320neo. This aircraft is currently coming in for the Denver International Airport today. Frontier has been facilitating a variety of services here on a uh, multi-weekly uh, fr frequency, of course. I think it's about four right now. So it's been great to see Frontier continue with continue to do what they do best, excuse me. And uh, Frontier's uh, Griswold, the bear Airbus A320 since been retired, and now they have it on A320neo. So I just thought that, you know, with the CFM engines, it's pretty close to representing a Neo, so I know it's not perfect, but how could you hold Griswold out in the airport update? Man, he's a great guy. So I uh, couldn't help but not have him in today's airport update, so that's why we have him here. And uh, excited to hopefully get a Neo from him at some point. They use uh, Griswold as an advertisement all the time. So it's only fair, hopefully, that we'll get a model of the Neo at some point. But the 320, still kicking it there with the really Really cool hybrid mode for Gemini Jets. Next up at gate number eight, we have the Spirit Airlines Airbus A320 Neo. This aircraft is coming in from Fort Lauderdale today and will be heading back out there. So, been very cool to see Spirit, uh, been really consistent with Fort Lauderdale and Orlando. So, awesome to see that. I'm excited to see where it goes from here. And it's certainly been a very exciting time here for Spirit at uh, uh, Pensacola. So, excited to see where it goes from here. Maybe we'll get some new routes sometime. We'll have to see, but certainly glad to have their presence and what works for them here at PNS. Next up right here, we have the Southwest Airlines Boeing 737-800. This aircraft's coming in from Houston Hobby, and now it's going to be heading out to Dallas Love Field. Uh, they certainly went a little off the rails here with regards to their uh, Saturday and Sunday services. I think Kansas City's fully gone uh, for the fall. Kansas City, St. Louis, Chicago Midway, and there may have been one other, uh, Denver as well. So it's unfortunate to see all those uh, terminated for the fall season, but I'm excited to hopefully see those back here again, whether it's next spring, next summer, maybe even the winter, I don't know. But excited to see where it goes from here and certainly glad to have Southwest's uh, consistent routes that would be Dallas, Houston, Nashville going full-fledged here. So excited for that and hopefully we'll get some more sometime. Docked up right here, gate number nine, we have this American Airlines Boeing 737-800. This aircraft's coming in from the Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport. Been awesome to see Dallas continuing to thrive on the Air 737-800. So I'm excited to see where it goes from here. It's been a really great service and glad to see that they've been sending so much capacity compared to what they have in the past. So really cool to see this here and American certainly on record volume here at PNS. Okay, now I know that this has since been retired, but uh, hear me out on why this is in here. This is the American Airlines Airbus A319 in the PSA Retro Paint Scheme. Now, I decided to put this in to uh, substitute here for an Airbus A321 upgauge. Now, the route that I'm going to use it on has actually been on an A319 lately, but there's been a couple of upgauges every now and again, not a 321. But what I wanted to make a reference to here is the latest news event that Piedmont in the PSA Airbus A321 uh, Retro Heritage aircraft have debuted for American Airlines, and they look awesome. So, I put this in here as a reference today because I really wanted to get after hopefully one of the model companies whether it's going to be Gemini Jets, NG Models, Aero Classics, Panda or somebody else hopefully they will make uh, the new A321 soon so I just want to make a reference to it but uh, it's really cool to see these back in service now and uh, glad to have my 319s I don't know how I'll handle them in the collection since obviously they're all going to 321s I'll probably keep them even though you know it's obviously quite a bit of value to hold on to having them in the fleet with the 321s that obviously I'll get but nevertheless I mean 
come on now. It's any American Airlines plane is awesome to have for the collection. So looking good here on PSA. This aircraft is currently coming in from the Charlotte Doubles International Airport. Two daily A319s and three daily CRJ 900s. So certainly doing great there on our service and I'm excited to see where it goes from here. So PSA smiling away over to Charlotte. I really need to get back there sometime. Especially now that they have the Lutons of 346 back uh, over there. That's awesome. Okay, right here at gate number five, we have this American Airlines Airbus A319-100. This aircraft has a CFM engine today. Loading up with a non-stop service to Washington National DCA. Uh, DCA continues to thrive here at PNS. So this has been one of the coolest mainline services that they've facilitated. And uh, the big picture here is that there's no competition. Obviously, United uh, eliminated Washington Dulles from their route nap here. So it's just American to DC, no Southwest to, uh, I think Southwest for a brief period had DCA, but certainly uh, not many other services to compete with. So American obviously can, uh, carry the full load there and that's awesome to see for them so airbus e 19 is heading over to washington today a united max 9 wow uh what can i say here besides that it's really cool to see this in today's airport update and very glad that i was able to find it lately i've been having a really challenging time finding all my models because of how big of a mess my room's been uh over the summer and obviously now into the fall which has certainly been tough but it's really cool that i was able to find this one at long glass because it's obviously a really important component to the collection and i need to get that new ng version of flip flop these but this one's still good and uh whenever i'm able to get that ng in the next round of model purchases i certainly will but nevertheless this is the uh united Airlines 737 max 9 here in today's airport update uh Quite crazy. I never thought that we would see a Max 9 here, but uh, here we go, everybody. This aircraft's coming in from Chicago O'Hare. Ah, oh, man, just crazy. Similar story to American's Washington service. American doesn't serve um, Chicago right now, so United pretty much is carrying the full load, which is really crazy to see. So it's been really interesting to see how these airlines have really kind of took over and become monopolies on several of these routes. So yeah, United certainly carrying the full load there on the once daily max nine. Uh, it's kind of interesting. I thought for sure that maybe they would go with two daily 175s at this capacity, but no, they're going all the way up for max nine. So very cool plane this year at Pensacola. Certainly the most, um, probably the uh, most unexpected aircraft that one would expect here. So it's really cool to see this. I think it's a very, very, very neat component. And considering that quite a few airports double the size of Pensacola, don't even get a Max 9 for the more regional jets. It's very cool to see that United's facilitating uh, multiple 737s here a day. And we'll see the next one here in a moment. But nevertheless, this is United Boeing 737 Max 9. Of course, like I said, it's heading out to Chicago here. Really cool to see that. And over there, we have the American Ember 175 for Envoy heading over to Miami today. No major notes, three daily service. It's been doing really well, and I'm glad to see uh, what they've been doing there. So that's absolutely fantastic. Uh, I know the light's not fantastic, so let me see if I can move the board over quite a ways over here so that we can get a little bit better here. Okay, so here we have two 737s. Sorry about Southwest for tipping. I know that they normally wouldn't be that close. In fact, let me just go ahead and back that up. There we go. That's looking better. Okay, so we have two 737s. The United 737-800 is coming in for Chicago here today and we'll be heading back out there now. Really cool to see the United 737-800 along with the Max 9. That's super cool. So certainly awesome to see all this mainline they've been uh, bringing into Pensacola and this is something that they didn't used to do. So a uh, major note for Pensacola, all the mainlines certainly have been invading from American United. Delta always has pretty consistently but for the other two not so much so it's really cool to see both them doing what they do best on the mainline flights i'm excited to see where it goes from here so yeah i i don't know if it can get much better than what we currently have in terms of capacity so that's awesome and then right here we have the south Carolina Boeing 737 800 uh lucky for everybody here it's freedom one today because i was the only one i could get off my table over here last minute because it's like we definitely need two south plus planes in here for pensacola so freedom one's going to be heading over to dallas love field today on the turnaround so great to see that Awesome to see that service doing really well for them and excited to see uh, if Southwest, like I said, will expand the route network soon. So going good in those departments. Okay, so here we have a silver Airbus, or sorry, this is a ATR 42 coming in from Tampa right now. Uh, that's a monopoly, a oh, golly. Monopoly for them. Of course, they also have Orlando. So cool to see that. And I must have got confused somewhere. They do not have Fort Lauderdale at this time, at least. So certainly interesting, but glad to see that they're doing what they do best. And right here we have this American CRJ-900 for PSA Airlines coming in from Philadelphia International Airport today. Unfortunately, this will be it for the moment. I think it's going to be probably a seasonal route is what it seems like. Uh, no November or December schedulings on this one. So we'll see what happens with it. Philadelphia is a cool route, so hopefully they'll be able to bring it back maybe in like April or May time frame. We'll have to see. You would think that would be one they would try to keep. But uh, next month, somebody's going to be making a move in conjunction with this one. So stay on the lookout for it. I was kind of referring to it earlier. So if you're putting the pieces together, you may have a guess. But uh, it'll be fun to cover this next month. So I'm certainly looking forward to it. So let's put American into the shade and head over to our uh, regional, or yeah, uh, this is our general aviation section rather. 
So we have the Cessna 172 making a local flight around the area. A Learjet 75 currently coming in right now from Mobile, Alabama, and now it's gonna be heading over to Jacksonville, Florida. And then we have the uh, Thenon 300 coming in right now from Las Vegas here at Reed, and now it's making a short flight over to Savannah. I uh, gotta get those shapeways going at some point. I'll talk about a little channel update here towards the end since uh, it's been a couple days already since I've been able to record the last update. So plenty to talk about as always over here. Uh, UPS Boeing 757-200 freighter coming in right now from Louisville, Kentucky. It will be heading back out there, getting deloaded over there. Um, or unloaded, not deloaded. Uh, thinking about the Airline Deregulation Act from uh, Class Project. I'll talk about that briefly at the end. And then we have this UPS service E300 freighter coming in right now from Albany, Georgia. Very standard. It's been cool to see that. And uh, certainly glad to see UPS carrying the load as uh, there's only Mardner and uh, one other company. I'm forgetting who it is uh, off the top of my head. I can't think of it, but nevertheless, there's one other company that does do cargo service here, but it's not a major one. So nevertheless, that will do for today's Pensacola Airport update. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. So uh, diving into some detail regarding uh, movements here around. Uh, so yeah, almost done with the busy stretch here. So I appreciate everybody's patience. Um, luckily, I've been able to get quite a bit of filming done. So it's not like content's going off the wells and off the rails. <laughs> In regards to consistency, but obviously I have a bunch of projects that I want to work on, but I was finally able to get a trip report complete and some other projects. So I'm looking forward to some uh, upcoming video projects that I have. I'm going to have a significantly more time on my hands for everything goes forward to plan. So I'm looking forward to the vibe and uh, it's really exciting. So there'll still be some fun movements in there. Uh, just not quite as many because September pretty much just got overloaded really, really bad uh, because of just a variety of reasons. So the main two being a Southwest Companion Pass and uh, a couple of flights uh, opportunities that came up, not last minute, but Breeze was, you know, unexpected there for a while. And then, uh, uh, who was the other one? And then Spot LEX, which uh, we'll talk about more in a future video. I still want to do a channel update. I know I'm way behind the curve at this point for a channel update, but I still kind of want to do one. So we'll figure out what happens, but I might just end up just grinding up the fall and then we'll really reevaluate in, uh, during winter break in regards to what to expect. So um, glad to get back on track there. And uh, yeah, with regards to uh, future movements, I certainly want to work towards some additional airport projects and uh, just model content in general. It's been a really tough time uh, not being able to be as engaged as I've wanted to be, uh, which is it's been really unfortunate. Uh, I'm certainly very fortunate to have all, all the opportunities I've had in regards to travel in 2023. But man, I certainly have missed uh, my models. I'm not going to sit here and uh, say otherwise. So uh, it's been beyond worth the opportunity. And I think each and every one of you will appreciate the uh, <laughs> amount and variety of content to come in that sector. But of course, I know that uh, it's not been a game with regards to uh, innovation on the channel. And uh, obviously, the number one goal is consistency. So we've been doing that and producing uh, content that each and every one of you will enjoy. But obviously, I really want to work towards the uh, uh, innovation element with regards to hopefully some new airports and some new projects. I have many ideas and I'm hopeful to execute on those during some uh, finally some time off here as a uh, I am ready for it, so it'll be good. And uh, we have some fun projects coming up in the future as well, so don't worry. It's not like we're not gonna do anything, but it'll be much less than what it's been since, uh, really uh, late, you know, since last school uh, semester ended. And obviously we're already, really cooking through this one already to October, so. Oh, we'll just continue the grind. That's all that we can do here. So uh, with regards to the Pensacola visit, that was really fun. Uh, like I was talking, referencing all these opportunities, uh, visiting Pensacola was certainly one of those. So visiting Pensacola uh, during the Destin trip was very fun. Uh, I was originally gonna try to spot at Destin and uh, stay in the area, uh, but I ended up, uh, my family ended up uh, taking a pretty much a, a relaxed day. So that's where I found the opportunity to go to Pensacola. And it was really cool to not only get to see Pensacola Airport, but also get to check out the Naval Navy Museum, which was awesome. There was a bunch of really, really cool aircraft in there. And I'll certainly be make, make, making a video on that. Um, who even knows anymore uh, in the future, we'll see that. So I'm looking forward to that. There's a bunch of great content, not only that, but obviously with the other projects and uh, I'm excited for those. So I hope each and every one of you are as well. Uh, it's been awesome to keep the consistency. I know like the massive unboxing has still been consistent and uh, model reviews and release reactions. So my goal is to continue the innovation element like I was referring to and uh, get back to the grind with regards to some various projects. So I'm looking forward to that and I hope each and every one of you are as well. Uh, it's really exciting and I'm fortunate to have this platform to be able to present that all to each and every one of you. So I hope each and every one of you are excited for it and thank you so much for your extended patience. I know that um, 
Pensacola is a cool airport, but man, we certainly need more projects like that one over there. And I'm sorry that it doesn't look great over there right now, but that's the reality when you don't have enough time to take a uh, set up and uh, put down. And then, you know, you can just see uh, what the uh, imp improvising looks like around here. So I'm looking very forward to it. And I hope each and every one of you are as well. But nevertheless, that'll do it for today's video, everybody. Uh, well, actually, let's talk a little bit more about Pensacola itself because I got off track here. Sorry. So, yeah, it was really cool to see where every aircraft parked. Like, obviously, uh, there was a... Not obviously, I'm sorry. Wording is struggling since I've not been able to film as much lately. There was a really cool silver all-white ATR-72 that was really fun to see, so I really enjoyed that. Uh, we also had... I got to see the American 737 at 7. That was really cool. And even Spirit. It was really great to see them. And uh, a couple of notes that I didn't really realize. Um, well, I, I knew, kind of knew about this, but it was really cool to see it uh, in real life. The airport's really nice inside. They have a really good facility. We'll make a more detailed video on that and Pensacola spotting. They have some really fun spotting locations, including a full dedicated observation area uh, with actual runways, uh, kind of like roads. So that was really cool to see. The uh, parking garage is another really fun spotting location. Very much enjoyed that. That was absolutely awesome. And then runway ops is really interesting sometimes. Uh, they'll split down the runway. Sometimes they'll use just one. So it's really interesting to see the variety there. So that was certainly interesting to watch. So that was certainly fascinating. And just overall, it was a really fun spotting day. We'll talk about it more in that spotting video again in the future at some point. But it was really special to finally get to uh, go to Pensacola and keep knocking out the list, especially considering that we were supposed to go there before the pandemic um, and obviously weren't able to. So really cool to get to do all this. And it was an absolute blast. So with all that being said, everybody, that'll do for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching i really hope you guys enjoyed today's video my name is of aviation i want to thank you guys so much for watching take it easy everybody stay safe trust process do you love and love what you do my name is Director of aviation i want to thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you guys soon as Director of aviation is signing off